knows she's walking in. I would like to call the Board of Selectmen to order. We are ordered too. You guys feel ordered? I'd like to call the uh, school committee public session to order as well. Uh, this evening's agenda is light. We really only have one item on our agenda this evening, and it's to fill the current vacancy in the school committee that was left when Mr. Croft uh, left the committee. Uh, this person will serve until the April 2015 election, just in case there's any questions about that. We have three excellent candidates this evening, and I thank you very much for uh, offering your time and your willingness to perform this duty for Reddick. Amy Kaler is here this evening, Gary Nine is here this, this evening, and Rob Gibbs is here. And, I, and as I said, as I reviewed the candidates' resumes and portfolios, I was struck by the depth of the, uh, of the accomplishments by each, and I think Reddick is very fortunate to have three candidates such as yourselves willing to perform this. Okay, so I thank you both as a, a Reading resident and as a member of the school committee. The way this works is that the Board of Selectmen and the school committee uh, by our charter are tasked with selecting someone to fill the seat. Uh, uh, there are, there will be, I'm sure very shortly, 10 members uh, that will uh, vote on the candidate. Uh, the candidate will need to receive a majority of votes. So the candidate will have to receive six votes. Uh, majority after that will win. Uh, if a candidate does not receive six votes, we'll continue voting. Uh, until we can select a candidate or until uh, somebody makes a motion perhaps to resubmit and restart the process. Hopefully that, that doesn't happen. Um, what I'd like to do as I stall for time, I, I'd like to, if it's okay, uh, I'd like to have ladies first this evening. So I'm gonna ask uh, Amy Kaler uh, to come up and sit in front of the board. Uh, each candidate, uh, please feel free to give an opening statement. I'll ask the committee, both committees, if they have questions of the candidate. Maybe we'll go, we'll alternate school committee, selectmen, or we'll do something that we think is fair. Um, after that, you're more than welcome to give a closing statement and move on to the next candidate. Questions? Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Written excuse later, but right now we're going to get started. So, teacher, again, I'd like to introduce Mrs. Um, Kaye from Singapore. Please. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me here. Um, uh, my name is Amy Kaler, and um, I've lived in Reading for four years. Um, and um, a little background: I, I've worked in public schools for nearly all of my professional life. Um, so I'm. I'm deeply committed to providing an excellent education for all students. I have worked at Charlestown High School for the last 12 years, which is um, part of Boston Public Schools. And um, there I was a teacher, and then I uh, moved into a teacher leader role, so I was the head of a small learning community at the school. And then I went back and got my principal license in um, school leadership, and then I became a, an administrator there. So. Most of my experience is from Boston Public Schools. Um, and because of the different roles, I think I have a, a good sense of what good schools need, what students need um, from a variety of perspectives. Um, most recently, my latest role is that of a parent. So I'm a parent to a five-year-old, Avery, who's gonna be starting at Barrows in one month, <laughs> less than one month. Um, I also have a daughter um, who is one and a half. So, um, I bring to that, this perspective as well, and um, I've been on the board of Reading's um, uh, Connect the Tots <laughs> group um, for the last year, which is um, a group that brings Reading families of young kids together um, for activities. So I've gotten a sense of um, that perspective as well, um, though I am new, newer to town. Um, I feel like I know a lot of parents of preschoolers, young elementary. Um, so because of all this, I am very committed to Reading Public Schools. I'm very interested and excited to contribute um, for the next couple decades <laughs> because I'll be a part of it. Um, that's probably enough. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you very much for throwing your hat in the ring yeah, for thanks for having me. And I'd like to say just an introduction. Um, we have three amazing candidates here, and I do hope that this is a very challenging process, choosing from three great candidates. So I do hope that all of you stay involved because I'd really value what you have to add to all the decisions coming up. But that being said, we have this process. So mm -hmm. I did have one question. One of the things that I found, I'm one of the newest school committee members, um, and I'm coming from both a role of volunteering and from writing for the newspaper about the schools. And in those two roles, I had the experience of sort of easy access to whomever I wanted, whenever I wanted, in a way. I mean. Um, and so it's been a learning process, learning the protocol, because now as a school committee member, there are certain protocol I need to go through so that I don't put people on the spot, so that I am a team, part of a team discussion, open meeting laws. And that's been a real lesson. So I'm wondering, um, wondering what you think will be how you will sort of navigate this new role as school committee member coming from an administrative role to a school committee role. Um, how do you feel that you'll navigate this communication and decision making process with the rest of the committee and yeah. within the town being the media mediator? Sure. So. Um, I have never been on a town committee so it, it's, uh, it's new to me obviously. Um, but I have had feel a lot of experience with navigating difficult waters. So I, I was a teacher for, I was a teacher prior, but at Charlestown I was a teacher for three years before I stepped into the teacher leader role. And that was a shift where I had to navigate, um, you know, some, some tensions between teachers and administrators, um, students and parents. And, um, and then when I got my principal license, I then stepped into the role of evaluator. It shifted again. And I had to navigate really difficult waters of actually evaluating out some teachers that I had formerly worked next to. So I, I have experience with navigating sort of this you know, political world um, in a small nutshell of a school, but um, I've gained a lot of experience and a lot of confidence with that. Um, in terms of learning the ropes, I would have a lot to learn. Um, I, uh, but I'm also very eager to learn. Um, so I was talking with Elaine a little bit via email um, and Dr. Doherty uh, about that and what the time commitment would be to sort of ramp up. And um, it sounds like the best thing to do would be to talk with some of you um, in, in the time that you have and, um, and try to learn, you know, learn about protocol and learn about um, the financial process. Yeah. Uh, public service is a labor of love obviously you do it because you want to do it and fortunately Reading is so multifaceted we've got uh, something that appeals to everyone whether it's gardening or historical or conservation or uh, education in schools um, what do you know what do you know of the challenges facing Reading today as you sit here today have you been able to kind of educate yourself as to kind of what the challenges this group is facing um. I think, in, in my opinion, the biggest one, the one that I've heard about the most, is um, providing free full day kindergarten and the economic issues that come along with that, with providing the space for that. Um, it's something that I've heard about just because, you know, the context of who I know, people sure. are very concerned. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, to me, that's, that's number one. Um, I, I also am aware that you, um, the school committee recently um, decided to go with the park um, for next year, so I, I have experience with the MCAS, and I, um, I'm aware of a lot of the ramifications of park versus MCAS. Um, uh, I guess those are, those are two that I'm aware of. 
since you, you mentioned it, I'll ask you a follow-up. The um, What's your opinion of Park versus Empress? And it's a done deal as far as this group is concerned, but what are your what's your opinion? Um, from what I've seen, the park is a lot harder. <laughs> I thought the MCAS was hard, actually. Um, but I think the park requires a different sort of thinking and different kind of learning and a different kind of teaching. Um, and I think that there's probably huge challenges with getting um, a district um, of learners ready for a new assessment like that. Good. Um, Thank you. Thank you. So I didn't mean to cut you off. Okay. I'm thrown. I, I've never seen food at one of our yeah. meetings before, and this is really throwing me off. So I apologize if I appear distracted. Uh, 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 and that's why he stopped conversation. Uh, uh, food, Mrs. Uh, yes, Mrs. Brosky. Thank you. I, I feel obligated to welcome you. I'm a Barrow's mom. I have two kiddos at oh, Barrow's. So thank welcome. You. Thanks and very much. I look forward to seeing you on the blacktop. Yeah. <clears throat> so. The school committee has three main areas of responsibility. Based on your background, um, clearly you've got a phenomenal set of educational skills in terms of evaluation of the superintendent of schools and setting school policy. The third area of responsibility is oversight of the budget, which is massive. Um, I was wondering if you could speak to your experience um, professionally, personally, anything that you've done that would prepare you and how you would approach analyzing a budget of $40 million. Um, Again, my experience is on the local school level. So during my time as a teacher leader and administrator, I was involved on the leadership team every year. So that would be um, eight or nine years with the budget conversation with our headmaster. So our headmaster was, has a, each headmaster has been very open, um, in including all the leadership team. So I'm pretty well versed in how it works on the school level. Of course, I would have to learn um, the district level because I have very little experience. I just have the experience of once it gets to us. Um, but I'm at least familiar with the components of a budget and also I think using your strategic plan to guide your decisions around a budget so, so that when you bring the decision out to the community, people understand. It's a more transparent process. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Kohler, for putting your candidacy forward. Uh, I have one question. Uh, Reading's per pupil expenditure ranks below its peer communities, yet Reading schools are highly rated. Uh, what does this tell you? Well, um, I guess money in doesn't always equal the quality of education out. And I think we see that um, in, throughout the state, um, throughout the country. Um, so Boston and Cambridge have one of the highest per pupil expenditures and their outcomes are not nearly as strong. Um, so I would imagine that I would attribute that to the quality of the leadership, the quality of the leadership in the schools, the quality of instruction, um, and the quality of, you know, of the preparation that students have when they enter the school. So the quality of the um, educational background that the community brings itself. Further questions for this candidate? Uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman? Sure. So just following up, continuing on sort of the financial area, uh, I just, maybe you can elaborate a little bit on sort of the tough budgetary decisions. You already sort of mentioned, you know, having to make those tough decisions about evaluating um, teachers out that you had worked alongside with. Mm -hmm. um, one of the aspects of being on the school committee is really be, having to make tough district, tough decisions district-wide when it's going to impact the uh, mothers or fathers and children that you stand next to in the schoolyard yeah. and um, so you know maybe you could elaborate a little bit about some of your experience so that I can sort of judge where how, how you would be able to handle that sure um, specifically the example I used earlier um, I was uh, I think our, our school, Charlestown was in a position of having lingering teachers who had been in, in the school for far too long. There hadn't been evaluations prior to with a previous headmaster. A new headmaster came in and, and it was really clear that there were some really low performing teachers. And um, as it, I, I felt very supported. So as a team, we um, worked very much together. But 
um, ultimately, when it came down to it, it was my evaluations on two and partly on the third um, that involved a year and a half of really difficult conversations, a lot of one-on-one -on -one time, and a lot of mentoring time um, trying to improve the level of instruction. But um, ultimately, it didn't come far enough. And, um, it was very difficult <laughs> because one woman in particular was, had been a mentor of mine when I was first teaching. Um, mm. So I was up late nights um, with this decision. But I knew, I mean, what, what drove me in that was knowing those students who were sitting in her classroom. And when I, you know, I, I knew those kids well. And I knew what was happening in that room because I had been in there 25 or, or 30 times um, in the, previous whatever you know month um, and so I think that's ultimately what has to drive your decision is knowing your students and and knowing that every student deserves a good education and those tough decisions are easier if you keep students at the focus thank you further questions feel free to raise your hand and I'll <laughs> certainly give you a no, little indecision. Go ahead, Ms. <laughs> so, um, continuing with the financial components, uh, one of the challenges, as you mentioned, for, for our town is, is being able to afford full day kindergarten and the buildings and all of the space that comes along with that. Mm -hmm. We also have to, as a town, figure out how we're going to <coughs> afford everything we have in the town. So I'm wondering what, 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 what you would consider, what kind of ways you would be able to approach this to maintain the split that we have today between the school and the town so that we do not funding all day kindergarten at the expense of operations in the town. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, I guess, I mean, I certainly recognize that there are competing interests. Um, I, think, I think the approach to that is to, li to truly listen to the different stakeholders, to show that you're listening, to be respectful in your listening. Um, and I guess to make the compelling argument but through the use of research and data. You know, I, I feel like if you can use the data in your, in your conversations, in your presentations, um, to show that this is, you know, that this isn't a very important issue, it's an, it's an issue of equity, um, then people will be more on board with it. Um, and also, I mean, it, it is in the town's best interest to have a great education system. Um, and so to the extent that you can, um, constantly promoting that that is an important, that, that, that really is the town's biggest priority, um, in addition, of course, to snow plowing the streets. <laughs> um, I don't know if I've answered that, but. Yeah, I think, well, if, if I can just do a follow up. So it, it, it's important to fund it, but, um, there's endless amounts of funding that's needed for Absolutely. the schools and we will never have the money to do everything that is wanted. And so there's a, a, a need to balance. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just wondering how you will bring in some balance to be able, you know, how you would apply some of that balance. Um, I guess I'll just reiterate. Um, but I, I, I do think that listening to, to the town as well as to um, parents, to teachers, um, is the critical piece. So making sure people felt, feel heard. Um, you know, clearly I, I need to learn more about town issues, about, you know, that component. Um, but um, that's, I guess, my best answer. Okay, thanks. Mr. Robbins? Yeah. Um, welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Further on um, Ms. Webb's question, uh, can you talk about uh, how you? I mean, as a member of the school committee, you represent over 4,000 students, uh, not just the Barrows community or or the grades that that your your particular children are in. Can you talk about how you uh, keep that when keep that? focus when you're making decisions, especially uh, in light of the potential of an election coming up in April? Mm -hmm. 
I, I think getting into the different schools is probably a, a piece of that. You know, I, I don't know the Reading schools personally, so um, I'm, I would look forward to visiting some and going to events and um, therefore, you know, spreading my net um, and getting to know more people and more perspectives. Um, but I, I have had experience, um, uh, my experience at Charlestown High School is, is an incredibly diverse school um, with a, just a huge, it, it probably is one of the most diverse schools in the state. It's, um, so we've got all types of learners there. Um, so there's a huge special ed um, program of 300 students, there's Spanish um, sheltered English immersion, there's Chinese sheltered English immersion, there's um, kids who are in AP track and go on to Bates and Bowdoin, and um, then there's kids who are hugely undercredited um, and overage. So I, I, I certainly have experience thinking about all kids um, and addressing the needs of all kids. And um, during my time, we actually started a program within our school to specifically help kids who were um, undercredited and overage. Um, it was called Diploma Plus that helped them to recover some of their credits. So um, I feel like I do, uh, one, one, one strength of mine is thinking big picture, thinking about all kids. And my experience, of course, is in high school. So I, um, I hope that I will be able to think about all those different perspectives. Of course you can, thank you. Uh, totally separate okay. topic. Um, do you, just curious in your experience in Charlestown, have you had any uh, role in collective bargaining or, or working with the union at all? No, um, aside from being a member of the BTU and then being a member of BASIS, which is the administrator's union. Um, but. And, and so not with negotiations, no. Um, only with being a member. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I have two quick questions, and then you're more than happy to provide a closing statement if there are no other questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, go, go ahead, Mr. Holman. Um, hi. Hi. Thanks for offering your service to the community. I, I really value that. Thanks for having me. Um, I'd like to shift gears kind of completely. Mm -hmm. um, in Reading, we've had a we've had a partnership with families and the school department and local police and um, the town, and it, it's on a very important topic that has affected our town, and that's substance abuse among our young people. Can you share whatever background and experience you might have in that and? Could you maybe tell us how you see the school department's role in that partnership? Um, yeah, I mean, I think my thoughts on that have grown tremendously over my um, professional career. I once felt that, um, I, I once, I guess, believed that that was not the responsibility of, um, that, that Schools could, there was a limit to how much schools could take on. <laughs> that to ask schools to educate kids and um, to, to, to the, the highest um, degree and to also take on all those other social issues was too much for schools. But I, I think in my experience, um, I have seen that schools have a huge role in um, providing the necessary counseling and various support services that um, those specific students require. Um, because at times, I mean, hopefully parents will be on board, but there's many, many times that families are not actually able to provide the support that the students need. Um, and that has to come from somewhere. Um, so maybe it does come from the police, maybe it, but, maybe, but, but the easiest um, route to access those students who are in crisis, I think, is the schools. So just a, a really quick follow-up. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it certainly isn't singular responsibility to anybody mm -hmm. um, it's a it's it's a collaborative mm -hmm. and to that end mm -hmm. we do have a coalition have you have you had a chance to understand about what our CASA is and the coalition no okay thanks I was going to ask uh, two questions uh, have you considered running for this position in April and if, if not maybe <coughs> were there 
the sure. reasons behind that? Um, I hadn't, no, I hadn't. Um, I worked until la this past school year was my first year um, on leave. Um, so I was actually home for the first time with my kids. Um, and, I, uh, and I was sort of immersed there. So I hadn't really thought about it. Um, Perfectly Until valid. I came up with it, yeah. <laughs> uh, in a, a very quick follow-up, have you thought about April yet? Um, yeah, I have. Um, and I would, if it, I know it's not very far off. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm generally interested um, in continuing. Um, and I, I think that this would be a really wonderful opportunity to um, get my feet wet and see what it's all about and um, try to contribute in the short time that I would have. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, Amy, Hi. thank you again uh, for coming out tonight. It's a real quick question. Um, what was the, the biggest deciding factor that made you want to put your hat into the ring? And you know, was it uh, an issue, or is it more larger than that? That's a good question. Um, I I mean I I am very interested in um, in equity in providing for all students. And I do think the kindergarten issue is, is a critical one. I mean, there's a lot of families who don't provide their kids with full day because of the financial issue. Um, so I, I guess that is one of the big things. Um, but I also am, I mean, I've, I've worked in public schools for almost my whole professional life. And I, um, I guess I'm looking for, for different ways to continue to contribute. And I see this as a really great way to learn more and also to start to give to my community. Thank you. Further questions? Would you like to have a closing statement? Um, I, sure. I, um, yeah. First of all, thank you for welcoming me and for, um, for giving me the chance to be here. It's exciting. Um, I um, would have a lot to learn um, in this position, but I also um, have, I think, the experience and the enthusiasm um, to jump in and learn quickly. Um, there's a lot that I already know, and there's a lot that I would have to learn. Um, but I, um, I'm just eager for um, the chance to, to learn more about writing schools and to um, contribute. So that's it. Chris, if I may, um, we obviously have three candidates here tonight, and in the event that you aren't selected, um, there are literally hundreds of opportunities, formal opportunities for you to participate, both as part of the town side or the school side or any of the cultural groups. And even in the absence of a role, many of our members have actually um, actively attended in no official capacity purely to become a voice of the public. And I urge you to consider working off the statement you just closed with. You're anxious to, to get involved. There's no shortage in this town of involvement opportunities, and I'd urge you to take those up should tonight not turn as you would like. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you for your time. So uh, I'm going to take a look at the chairman, uh, whatever, uh, and ask if my ex-football coach could go next. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Mr. Gary Nine is our next candidate. Welcome, Mr. Nine. Thank you. And thank you for this opportunity. If you'd like to start with an opening statement. Um, sure, I think some of you know me, um, may know my background, those of you that don't. Uh, lifelong resident of Reading, uh, attended the Reading Public Schools. Um, just, you know, currently uh, initiating my 39th year in education um, um, as, as a teacher, administrator, um, now currently is an adjunct faculty member at uh, Salem State BU and Cambridge College, um, in particular supervising student teachers. And um, previous to, uh, to that, I was uh, administrator in Damas Public Schools, um, initially director of applied arts, which is everything that didn't get tested. Um, art, music, physical education, health, technology education, all important, very important. But, um, and then um, the opportunity arose um, through some grant writing um, that I had done, um, co-writing, uh, 
job shift primarily to physical education and health, and also nurses. And it's a good thing the nurses really knew what they were doing, because I really didn't have a lot to offer. Um, but I was also a grant manager. I supervised. I wrote grants. Um, was a project director for grants. Um, oh, the grants. We had a federal, two federal grants. Uh, Carolyn White PEP grant, which we also had in Reading uh, that I was involved in, um, which was focused on physical education primarily and health education. Um, also, uh, a drug free community support grant, which talks to what John mentioned, um, was the substance abuse prevention coalition that we had in Danvers, also in Reading, uh, worked on that grant. Um, and a few other grants that were related to uh, social competency, bullying, and so forth. So. So I think I accomplished a lot in Danvers, um, probably about three to four million dollars in grant money that we brought into the district. Not, not just myself, but the um, person I worked with closely named Peg Saladay. Um, in Reading, um, where I spent the majority of my career, um, 30 plus years, I taught elementary physical education, health, high school physical education, health. Um, was also a department head at the high school, and also uh, director of adult community education, also involved with uh, substance abuse prevention, um, um, SAPAC, substance, ab substance abuse prevention, I forget exactly what it turned, but it morphed into our CASA. Um, that was a very small group. And, uh, but it did springboard the initiative um, to write a grant to fund our CASA. Um, I was also an interim principal um, in Reading at uh, Josh Wheaton. Uh, spent most of my career at Barrows Elementary School as an assistant principal. Um, and I was also a project director for uh, three grants. Uh, PEP grant here, Title, title uh, IV, and then an Executive Office of Public Safety grant, which was primarily focused on so, uh, prevention, um, skills-based prevention at the elementary level. and. Uh, and as I said, co-wrote um, the Safe and Drug Free School Grant, which essentially funded uh, our CASA, Erica McNamara's position. Um, so I feel fortunate throughout my career that I've had a lot of different opportunities, um, did a lot of different things. Worked, I, I loved working with students, but I also really enjoyed the opportunity to be an administrator, work in evaluation, um, just completed all my coursework for uh, my doctorate in education. I'll be starting my uh, thesis, well, I've already started it, and hopefully finish it sometime, um, maybe I'm optimistically stating January. I'll, it's pr probably very optimistic, but I, I wanna have something that, to shoot for. And um, I also, as I said, work in uh, higher ed. And I also consult with school districts, so I'm out there a lot, uh, I work probably with eight, nine, maybe 10 different school districts, not all at the same time, um, working with them on, on their grants, primarily uh, the physical education grant that we talked about, the, that I mentioned, the Carolyn White Pep grant. And I'm in contact with superintendents and department heads and assistant superintendents, principals. Um, and then um, I think, um, you know, finally, I, I really think that uh, you know, as I, as I said, my main interest in this position is that uh, I'm, I'm a strong advocate for our public education and um, really looking forward for the opportunity to do whatever I can to enhance currently what we're doing, if I can, and, and uh, uh, support the initiatives that uh, we're currently faced with. Thank you. Let's start to my left this time, Mr. Reno. Uh, Gary, uh, thank you again for uh, coming out tonight. Thank you, my pleasure. Um, a question that's a, that may be limited only a, 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 the occasional candidate is, uh, I understand you have a family member who is a, a current employee of the schools. Mm -hmm. And I've been advised that on its face that is not a conflict. But under the circumstance, would you be willing to file a, a disclosure statement with the town clerk uh, about your uh, spouse's employment to avoid the appearance sure. of a conflict. Yes, of course. Okay. Um, I, I will state that my wife will not talk about education to me, so 
<laughs> she comes home, doesn't want to talk about it. No shop talk at home. Huh? Very little. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Robinson? Thank, thank you, Gary. Uh, question that's probably similar to John's. Uh, you know, as a, as a former employee, uh, you have many friends that I'm sure still work in the district. Uh, how, how, do you, how will you handle it uh, when one of them, if one of them approaches you looking for some type of special dispensation or something as a member of the school committee? I'm not so sure they'd be, I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe they will be asking me for some sort of dispensation, but I think the most important thing is, yeah, there's, there's no question I'd be faced with that, but I think um, it's important to listen to people, um, and I think um, the, when you're making a decision, it's important as many of the decisions, that, well, all of the decisions that are made here, the, as much information as you can get, gather is important. Um, you know, wherever the, the channel is, whatever network you, you're using. So I think that's important to listen, to ask questions, but not make any promises or, you know, give any opinions. Um, you know, I think it's really just important to be a good listener, not just with, you know, colleagues that I, you know, previously worked with, but with the population in general. Thank you. Questions from the selectmen? Yeah. Sure. Um, I asked the same question I asked last uh, in the um, what was the big driver for you wanting to, to put your, your hat in the ring and, and become a school committee member? Um, well, I've wanted to do this for a while, but um, my coursework at Northeastern really didn't allow me to do it. I, I thought about it. Cameron Janowski had put the bug in my hand numerous times and kept telling me to do it and telling me to do it. And, um, this just seemed like a great opportunity. I just finished all my coursework um, January 29th, uh, January 20th, June 29th. And, um, my schedule is much more flexible now because when you're, you're working on your thesis, you can pick and choose the time you want to do it as opposed to um, coursework where you had to get it done by a timeline and a um, certain amount of reading that had to be accomplished. I knew I just couldn't commit to the, to the time frame that was necessary to, 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 be, to be a viable member of the Reading uh, School Committee. And, but I also think last, um, last town meeting, April town meeting, um, you know, I heard that um, you know, financially, we're, we're not in the best of, of circumstances um, as a town. We've always been well managed, and um, when I hear that, it's concerning. Um, it's, I don't think it's someone crying wolf, um, which might happen sometimes in some school districts and some communities, and may have happened in the past here, but I know it's not the case now. And, and um, I also think that, um, you know, I, I do think the kindergarten uh, full-day kindergarten is a pressing issue. Um, Common Core, um, th there's high expectations for our kindergartners now. I mean, they're going to come out with expectations of certain skills and knowledge that I I'm not, I don't think anybody's confident that a half-day kindergarten would provide them those skills. And we are using the park um, assessment, um, which is based off the Common Core, which is one of the strengths of it. So um, that, and then I think also another driving force too is behavioral health that I know um, I've had discussions with Dr. Doherty about it, um, offered um, my insight as, as it was uh, applicable. And um, you know, I'm really concerned about what we can do as a school district to, to, to uh, essentially you know, work on prevention strategies. I know right now we're doing a great job in intervention strategies, but Prevention is really a key thing. Thank you. Mrs. Dobson? Sure. Hi. Thank you so much for Thank putting you. yourself out uh, here. Also a catalyst that encouraged me to do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm actually going to rephrase, reframe my original question to Amy um, in terms of my challenge when I entered this new role of the protocols and the different relationships between me and my constituents, if I can put it that way, and the teachers, and, and there are certain w ways of interacting that changed. And I'm, I'm gonna frame that actually because I know you've been doing important work with district determined measures. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're an expert and becoming an expert on that process 
we'll see. Um, and that's something the schools are working on as well. So I'm wondering if you can talk about how you'll balance your knowledge, your research on the district determined measures, but also the respect of the um, channels that you need to go through when working with the schools about those. Did that make sense? Um, sounds it's, like it's almost two different questions. Okay. But, but as far as district determined measures goes, um, you know, that's um, it's going to be new to a lot of districts. Um, I'm not sure um, if Reading piloting them this year or they implemented them last year. I think they implemented them last year or they piloted them. Um, so, you know, I, I would have that insight um, to offer, but um, I'm, I'm not really an expert on it now. I've done a lot of reading on it, done a lot of research on it. Um, I'll do more research outside of the Reading Public Schools um, with a few other school districts that I'll be doing a case study with. Um, but in terms of, you know, um, interacting with constituents, I think, is, as I mentioned earlier, is an important, uh, important piece. And I think, I think I always appreciated if I had um, a, a bone of contention, let's say, that if I had talked to a school committee member or a member of the Board of Selectmen or, or whatever, Recreation Committee, that they were always good listeners and um, did ask questions. And um, I think that's what I would, I would not, not I think, I know that's what I would model. And in my experience too, you know, as an administrator, as, as um, a previous uh, person had spoken, Amy, I think that's her name. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it, you, you have to have confidentiality and be respectful. Um, but nonetheless, I still think um, listening to, you know, somebody calls you on the phone and, and wants to talk to you about something, um, you've got to be responsive because you represent them um, as well as the students that are, you know, attending the Reading Public Schools. Does that answer? It does, and I, can I, Chair, may I follow up? Yes. And it's sort of a clarification, I think. So the next step is, um, as school committee members, we're not necessarily the primary expert, on, we're not the primary expert on different aspects of the curriculum, even though we're intermediaries. Um, and it's really important to make sure that questions are answered by the experts, by those who, where the buck stops, mm -hmm. the people that are front line on those issues. And so part of my question was, um, how do you foresee yourself dealing with not being able to actually necessarily be the answer, the one who answers the question for the school system, but I directing think, people what, to the appropriate yeah, experts? Right, so I think what, what you're getting at and, and um, what, again, I've, I've seen happen and what I would do as well is if I don't, um, whether or not I think I have the answer or not, it maybe is not appropriate for me to give them a, you know, a, a response. It's not something, I, I'm not gonna be um, in a position where I'm gonna second guess anybody, but I would certainly point them in the direction of you know, the superintendent's office to the experts that are there. Um, I do think it's important that we become experts in, in what we're doing. I think that um, you know, we need to ask a lot of questions um, Within the, within the town, but also, you know, seek out information, too, to, to make good decisions. I think that's one of the things that I can offer, too, is that I've done a lot of networking, um, particularly the last four years, um, three years, um, working in, with these different school districts and seeing what other school districts are doing, and also my experience in Danvers, um, which is a, a well-run school district in a, in a school town that's very similar to Reading. So, yeah, I would be pointing them in the direction of the superintendent's office for questions that um, I wouldn't have the answer to or, or shouldn't give the answer to, let's put it that way. Thank you. Board of Selectmen, questions? Mr. Halsey? Yeah. Um, Gary, I'd like to thank you for offering your services. Thanks. I know you're no stranger to this, <laughs> um, which is kind of a framework for my question. I know I've seen you at town meeting. Um, it's where the budget process ultimately, you know, meets the road. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about your experience, whether it's in previous positions or as a town meeting member, 
relative to the understanding of the budget and the process. One, one thing I didn't mention, I've been a town meeting member for 20 years. Yes. So I've sat and, and listened to budgets being presented 20 times um, and asked questions and listened. And I think it's a great format, one that, you know, is, is perfect in terms of how we make decisions as, as far as I'm concerned. Um, maybe everything doesn't come out right, but 90, I'd say, you know, strong percentage of the time it does. And um, I think it's, it's great to have uh, input from, uh, from those in attendance. And, and also it's even better when you get a phone call um, from a constituent that has a hot button topic that they want you to. So I'm familiar with the budget process. I've seen it presented um, from my perspective of, um, in the Danis Public Schools as administrator, I was a member of the administrative council. I was responsible for preparing the budget for my departments, but then also defending them you know, to the administrative council because there's only so much money as we know and um, everybody has, you know, needs and, and things that they feel important. Um, so I think the, the thing that I learned best was the give and take and, and recognizing um, priorities that are, that are really important. And uh, um, so I, I feel comfortable that, you know, my, my background with finance is um, going to be beneficial to the, to the uh, Reading Public Schools. Thanks. Mrs. Borowski? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, honestly, Mr. Halsey just took my question. <laughs> so, but I have a backup ready to go. Um, I think one of the strengths I feel in Reading is how collaboratively the boards work together, and it isn't that way in every community. Um, how do you see yourself, on the one hand, advocating for the schools? But on the other hand, understanding that we're all part of the same town, and much like your administrative council meetings, there's only so much money, there are only so many resources. How do you see yourself striking that balance between being a strong advocate for the schools, but also working collaboratively with all the stakeholders in the town? Again, I, I really think it's important to you know, go back to, um, you know, you can, being a critical thinker, um, asking really good questions, being a really good listener, and, and um, you know, essentially um, weighing out what you know is a priority what you hear is a priority and again um, you know what what the constituents have to say too and and um, I think that's the best I can do to describe how I feel it, it, it would work thank you let me see if I can remember after getting that special <laughs> Um, I'm just wondering if you can talk a little bit about what you see the role of the school committee in terms of oversight for the school finances and budget. What, how do you see the school committee playing a role in that? Um, well, the school committee would be obviously um, listening to the superintendent and the administrators in terms of what they feel are priorities. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, listening to what we have for available funds. And um, I think collaborating Again, you know, you can go back to the 21st century skills of collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, communication, and those are all four, the four C's that you really need to use as the driving force in making decisions. And um, I think you have to be able to think outside the box, and, and uh, maybe there's a less expensive approach to something. You know, is there a better way to do it? And, and really, um, that's when I think the, the critical thinking and the creativity comes into play. Um, thank you. I, I think it's important as we go through this process that we try to make sure we hear sort of the same types of topic areas from each candidate so I'm not asking the same question. Uh, I, I would like you to comment on the question that Amy addressed that was asked about the um, per pupil and educational outcomes and you know as you're aware um, if you've been to town meeting you understand how that uh, our, our position against the state average has shifted over the last seven to ten years so maybe you could comment on you know how you feel about that it sort of leads right from the last question yeah I I have uh, mixed emotions but I you know as, as a as an administrator and a teacher you know and I can also tell you from um, my experience and exposure to grants that you know money can do a lot of great things and um, um, it's important to to place that balance and and um, I think Amy had a great response in terms of, um, you know, it, 
money doesn't always reflect the amount of work that's, that's put forth and, and the commitment that uh, uh, the administrators and particularly the teachers put into it um, and the support that you can get from, you know, the, the, the community in general too. I mean, I, I know that in Reading, um, Again, I, ha I have some comparison. I, I was in the Dennis Public Schools, and I can tell you that the, the writing teachers that I'm familiar with, my wife included, are, are very um, apt to you know, support their own classroom with their own funds, more so than I think you would see in another district. And, and Reading gets, um, I hate to use this term, but you know, the biggest bang for its buck, I think. Um, but that being said, I do think that, um, you know, education is expensive. And um, as I say, if, um, you know, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. Mm -hmm. um, but what I really think that, I really think that, you know, I would be an advocate for um, supporting a budget that, um, you know, is reflected of what, what we need to, to, to get done, and in particular in light of you know, what we're faced with, um, you know, the full day kindergarten. Um, I think it's important to, to present, um, you know, the side of it that is really, you know, it's, it's some of the things that I mentioned relative to mm -hmm. the Common Core, um, uh, park, you know, we're, and, and, you know, and I think, you know, technology too is expensive and um, I'm not really up to speed with what we have for technology. Did a great job in Danvers, and um, you know it would have something for me to compare to. So I'd be interested in seeing that as well. Thank you. Further questions from the committee? I, I think they've covered most of the ground I was going to cover. So I'm just going to ask you, Gary, what's your thesis topic? Um, well, I was just talking to Dr. Darty about it. Every time you, there's three courses that I have to take to prepare for the dissertation, and um, I thought I had a really good topic in my first course, mm -hmm. and then second professor wanted me I think to do her dissertation and then the third professor wanted me to do her dissertation yeah, but so finally okay. have an advisor that's going back to where I started so it's basically yeah. on um, teacher evaluation um, in particular is the, the the new race to the top educator evaluation program making change are teachers changing because of it and um, you know will that result in you know, high performance for our students. I mean, I won't get into that. That will take a long time, but, you know, and, and I'm looking at administrative perspective as much as teachers, because I think administrators are the ones out in the field seeing it and can tell if, if the teachers are. But you have to always be careful asking somebody about their dissertation topic. So I have been warned you have to have an elevator speech. So I'm gonna cut it off right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, been there, done that, so. School committee is set. We don't, but absolutely go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and, if, and if I might, I, I do apologize to the FinCom. We it does look as though we're going to be running a little later than expected, so I apologize. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Halsey. So, um, kind of in, in in the theme of the of a question I asked Amy, uh, I mean, you've commented on full day kindergarten, and I think all of us realize that this is an emerging you know, not only challenge, but an emerging obligation that we want to find a way to fulfill. Um, and what that says, kind of with the an expanded RISE program and full day kindergarten, I mean, we're going to have in our school system, essentially from the time a child is a toddler till they're ready to go off to college, um, we probably are going to have more involvement in their waking hours than anybody. Maybe even their parents, and uh, and, and I want to come back to this idea of the partnership around um, the issue of substance abuse. And what do you see as the as the school's role? I know that in, in your earlier comments, you it sounds like you've been kind of a pioneer here in Reading, at least. And maybe you could expand on your thoughts as to the school's role in that partnership. Yeah, as you said, it's 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 a you know, and the whole concept of our casa is it's a community is a community issue. But everybody has a role in it, and you know, I believe that um, I'm, I'm a strong advocate for prevention, and, and Dr. Darty knows that. We've, I've talked to him about it, and um, I think that um, 
you know, an ounce of prevention, as they say, is worth a pound of cure. And, um, you know, I, I think that it takes a while for that to, to have a, an effect. Um, but I'm, I'm really concerned, not, not just about substance abuse either, but the mental health of our, of our student population. I know, um, I'm aware that, in, in, uh, I'm, I'm confident it's happening here because I know it's happening in other districts. But, um, you know, the, the level of anxiety that our students have, um, the pressure that they're under and, and how they respond. And, you know, in particular, I'm, I'm, I'm really an advocate for, and not just knowledge, like, you know, I, I remember, um, I, I shouldn't say this, but I, I, I guess I won't. Um, <laughs> but, but edu health education in a long time would be, you know, can you name the three ways to take drugs? Well, that would be a pretty stupid question to ask kids because they all know that. But, you know, can you, um, you know, what type of skills um, can you provide those students so they can make better decisions, not just on their own, but help their friends? Um, I was aware of a situation um, where there was a, uh, in, 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 in another district, where a student um, was in a, an abusive relationship. Um, this is a senior in high school. And her, her friends didn't know what to do. You know, they should know what to do. And you can go back and look at, you know, circumstances in other communities. There was a really bad, horrific situation in Wayland not too long ago where a young, young girl was, you know, strangled by her ex-boyfriend. And, but there were warning signs there, you know, and, and you know, I don't know. I mean, and, and as parents, you're not always going to know what's happening, but I really think it's important for the students to be educated in terms of developing skills that they, they need to be able to respond to these these issues that are prevalent. Thanks. Closing statement. Um, I think I pretty much covered everything, but um, I think I've covered everything. I just would enjoy the opportunity to to take my experience in education to the next level in terms of uh, I found it very rewarding to um, I as I was talking to, to Rob, and, and Elaine probably knows, I, I was the adapted physical education teacher at the Rise Preschool and had their children. And then I also taught high school, elementary, middle school physical education over the course of my career. Now I'm working with um, aspiring teachers in physical education. And um, it's been a really, it almost, almost closes the circle. I think this would close the circle, having this opportunity to be involved in policy. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Again, I, I apologize for those that are here for our 730. It's okay to continue. Mr. Robinson would like a sandwich. And <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gibbs, please. Thank you so much for waiting, Mr. Gibbs. Absolutely. Rob That's Gibbs good. is our third and final candidate this evening. Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. We will not rush. <laughs> so please, an opening statement? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for taking your time out of your summers to to be here as well. It was nice you welcomed each of the candidates, which was, which was uh, we we're all taking our time out as well, so it's great for a common good of the town of Reading. Um, first of all, my wife and I, we moved here over 20 years ago to the town of Reading because we believed it was a, a great town and a, and a town, as one person said, you should move to Reading because you can get a bang for your buck here um, with the great school system we have. <clears throat> I have uh, three children uh, currently in the system right now. I have a sixth grader. I have an uh, incoming freshman at the high school and a tenth grader as well, um, who've all received uh, enriching and excellent educations um, so far. Uh, I've been in teaching for over 25 years. I'm a current teacher at Woburn High School, um, and I've taught in the Lexington system as well in the lab collaborative um, in special education my, my whole career. Um, and I, my wife and I co-founded a nonprofit organization, um, and I'm the current president and a working board member um, who raises funds for people with Down syndrome <clears throat> and, uh, and disabilities. Um, I guess I'll go into why I want to do this, if that's okay. Absolutely. All right. Um, <clears throat> I did note that my kids have had a great uh, education in Reading. Um, starting in the RISE preschool. Um, and I would like that to continue for all students within the system. Um, I think my special ed background uh, would be helpful 
uh, to the board um, and were given some insight into programming. Um, and since I'm a, I'm a current teacher right now, I've been dealing with some of the new initiatives uh, between the MCAS and PARC and DDMs and the retail, um, which would also give me some insight. Um, and one of my, you know, I, I sat back and I really thought why I wanted to do this. And um, one of the reasons I attended the Blue Ribbon Conference at the high school, and I was so inspired by the teachers. I presented last year um, on our learning center. We have at Woburn, which we're very proud of. Um, but then uh, I sat in a, in a classroom of, of a Reading teacher, um, and I was just amazed at the technology and, and my son's uh, teacher last year in history. Kerry uh, Gallagher. Um, so I just thought that was amazing. Love to be a part of something like that. Um, and I was just inspired at the conference. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Any questions for this time? Go ahead, Mrs. Doxer. Well, I'm pretty repetitive. I asked the same question. I know you're coming from um, a position of first hand experience or, or second hand <laughs> experience, as the case may be. Um, but I'm wondering, as an expert on a working expert on special education, um, coming into a system where you won't be necessarily frontline enacting the things that we're talking about, can you talk about how you'll manage that relationship and the organizational chart and community? Yeah, yeah. Can, I, can you, I guess, you know, Gary said, you know, an expert. I mean, there's so many facets of special education, um, and there's so much to. I don't know all the facets of the Reading schools. I know more of what we do in Woburn, but I've seen firsthand some of the um, programming that is done at, at Reading, and I would want to learn more about what they do. But I, I know that um, <clears throat> that special education is one quarter of the budget of uh, the system in, in Reading. Um, and I know we can be more efficient with those dollars uh, with programming and bringing programs into the system. Um, so I, I definitely would have some insight uh, on moving maybe some of the programs that way. Thank you. Mr. Arena. Um, you've heard tonight uh, in the other questions that have been asked of the other candidates, the, the real challenges on the financial side, what I call kind of the business of school, how do you make the trade-offs between potential programs? How do you prioritize scarce resources of people, time, uh, money, of course. What's your experience been uh, as an educator or in any of your administrative roles with Samantha's Harvest in that capacity? Well, yeah, I mean, sitting on a, on a working board, we have a Samantha's Harvest. We have to sit down together as friends and um, we're on the board and also people have a vested interest in, in people with, with special needs. And we have to divide those dollars up. and. We've always had some healthy discussions each year when we, we break that money up and distribute it to, I think, eight different organizations uh, who are throughout the state. Um, and those are healthy discussions. We try to work cooperatively, and we have different perspectives. Um, and I, I, the bottom line, like I just said, I think you have to work cooperatively, and you have to listen to people. And since I'm one of the co-founders, I don't have the say in everything. Um, because I want to value everyone on the board. And um, so I think that perspective from Smith and Harvest helps me with the budgeting piece. Um, <clears throat> professionally budgeting, I, I don't have any oversight in the budget, um, but I do have my say from the special ed director on what works and what doesn't work within the system. How can we use our dollars effectively in Woburn, um, which I've, <clears throat> I've always had uh, my, my two cents in it. Uh, professionally since I've been doing this for so long I think it's helped me um, and I think decision making with budget for me is you know you got to look I like the saying look 30,000 feet up um, because for me I'm working with you know 25 students um, liaison for it and I just can't think about just each student individually I have to think about the big picture and how the budget works because if you put money in one area you have to take away from another area you have to prioritize when it comes to budgets the school committee? Mrs. Webb. Uh, 
Maybe you could uh, comment. Some of the other candidates have talked about uh, their perspective on early childhood ed education and, and how that um, issue is facing our district and our town. Yeah, that's, that's a big issue because we know there's an, a need um, for space at the, uh, the pre-K and the, and the full day K and also affects the high school as well um, where there's a need for space at the high school. Uh, and I think that's a big issue on everyone's plate in this room right now. And it's everyone's mind. How can we do it efficiently, effectively? Um, we, we, over, we had a pass for the monies for the library. Um, and so now the, the, there's a squeeze for the dollars. And I, like everyone in this room, I got my tax bill and it, and it rised. Um, and so and that's something, an issue that we all have to face in town and make a priority and try to do it the most efficient way possible. Um, but we know the research is out there and we know that full day K is something that's going to help and also if we can get more kids into the RISE program as well and, and bring revenue in that way, I think that would help the budget. Um, but we know the most important thing is the education of children in this town. And the earlier we get these kids into working with teachers, my kids benefited greatly working with Gary, of course, and, um, and other great teachers at the RISE program, um, but I would definitely help. Um, if we can service more kids in our RISE program with the great teachers that we have there. Um, but we also have to think about the, uh, the everyone in town, um, about the, the, the scarcer dollars that we have, um, the concerns about the, the big picture of the budget, and um, you know, how do you go to the town and ask for more money, and how do you do it effectively? And this town is efficient with our money. I mean, the, one of the lowest pu pu purple, um, pur purple, uh, purple pupil, uh, expenditures um, we are efficient in this town which is which is great but we have to continue to do that and use our money wisely from the board of selectmen I'm gonna go back to my familiar question you know anybody that knows me knows that this is a very hot button issue um, I think for our for our whole town um, and that is the role that the school department plays in the partnership um, on the challenges that are facing our children, whether it be substance or otherwise. I, I'm interested in your thoughts as to the role that school fits. How, how does the school department fit into that partnership? Yeah, I mean, I, the schools are, are one piece of, of the pie. Um, we also you know, put responsibility in the parents. We put the responsibility you know, I'm a coach. I've been a coach for 25 years. I mean, I, I've had a lot of interactions with students that have struggled <clears throat> with drugs and alcohol, um, counseled a lot of students um, that have come to me personally and look for guidance. I've talked to a lot of parents and very concerned about this. I, I know the, my kids are very concerned. The uh, zero tolerance policy that we put in place in this town, I think it's been effective, at least for my boys, because it's on their mind. Um, <clears throat> I, they've made decisions socially around this policy and I, I've seen it's been very effective. Um, and the schools have a, a big role to play. I mean, the, we, us as educators are with the kids for you know seven hours during the day. Um, and we play a big role in the programs that we support in town also play a big role um, for the students. And, uh, and I think that, you know, it's again, where are you gonna allocate the dollars that you're gonna, you know, and, I understand that the schools have a, a big role to play, but you know, how much can we fund and can we support even more programming in the school? Um, you know, it's, it, it comes down to priorities again, John, and I, I think it's a great question. I, you know, as, more, as much as we can do is, is better. Thank you. you decide to, to throw your hat in the ring yeah I, I think um, I think a couple things I, you know I, I think I talked about um, I, I believe um, in the direction the school system is going right now uh, and, and I believe also in the, the, the current committee right now I think you do all have in your best interest of all the students um, and I like to be a part of that um, and I believe that some big decisions coming up, and I'd like to be part of those big decisions. Um, where you know I, I know that the economy is doing better right now, but the money's going to be becoming more scarce. 
Um, I'd like to be part of those decisions. Um, I'd like to be part of decisions uh, when it comes to the early childhood center or any type of decision that we make. Um, and like I said before, I was inspired at Blue Ribbon. Um, I'd like to be a part of a, um, the decisions when it comes to a, the system right now. I, I think this is a, the system is an envy of many of the surrounding towns. Um, and I know that this, it's also an envy that the school committee works with the finance and the selectmen as well as it does and works as a team for a common goal. Um, and I think my experience working cooperatively with my board um, that I work on and I think that I could also be um, helpful in, as well. Kevin? Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob, for coming out tonight. I appreciate it. Um, and thank you for stealing my recurring question to all the candidates, as well as you, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, just real quickly, talk a, l a little bit about maybe some of your goals that you would see, you know, if you were uh, selected in between you and the committee, uh, with what's knowing with what's in front of you. Um, well, I, I guess all three of the candidates, I, I think, are first goal to get to, to get to speed, um, and uh, you know, a lot of the issues that. You know, we don't see or we don't read. I think it's one thing, my first goal to get up to speed and kind of get a better understanding how the board works. Um, but big picture, uh, I know that right now, is the, pretty soon, it's going to be the budget. Um, and looking at the budget and prioritizing with the budget is one thing that's, you know, is kind of deciding between wants and needs and kind of the direction that the school system is going to go in. Um, I, I think another issue that one of my goals, I, I know there's a lot of new administrators in town. Um, I know communication was one of those issues that popped up from a lot of parents. I've talked to a lot of parents in, in town and, and um, we got a couple uh, emails the other night about it. And, um, and I think for me, listening to people um, and then also directing people in the right direction. Um, and we directed a couple parents and they're hopefully in the right direction to get some more information. But, I think the communication could be better, um, and I think that's another goal that I would have. Thank you. School committee? Like me? Closing statement, Mr. Kidd? Sure. I was just going to get up and leave. Um, I, again, I thank you for your time that you've put in um, to moving the town, as I said before, in the, in the right direction. Um, and. I understand you have a very difficult decision ahead of you. You have three great candidates that have worked in the field of education. Um, and I think all of us are, are very excited to, to be a part of it. Um, so I'd just like to say that I'd like to, if I was on board, I'd be very excited and put some energies towards common goals. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Uh, again, I, uh, I can't thank the three candidates enough for uh, spending their time with us this evening and be willing to volunteer to be on the school committee. Um, with that said, I'd like to open it up to discussion between the two boards, and then I would like to move to the begin of voting process. So are there comments that anyone might have? That's fine. Uh, I was trying to think of an e equitable way of doing a roll call vote um, I decided we'll, we'll try it this way. I'm going to go in reverse alphabetical order for fun. <laughs> I, so it, it actually is a fairly good distribution between going back and forth between the two committees. And the last shall be first. You know. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the way this will work is I will call each board member's name. I'll ask them to uh, cast their vote for one of the candidates. Uh, if someone wants to try to help me keep honest as we go through this, uh, but I'll also I'll also tell you that. So, Mrs. Webb. Uh, yes, thank you. Nope. Uh, sorry. Webb. 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 Oh, Mrs. West. Oh my goodness I'm gracious. I'm used to always being last. I just assumed it. So. Okay, we're going to fight over who's first now. We are absolutely going to edit this tape. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, uh, can we use no maiden names? Don't work out. Mrs. West. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Cruz. <laughs> Um, this is a very, very tough decision. I have to say, I, I, I thank all three of the candidates um, for coming out and, and for spending the time. You're all really, really well qualified. So this is a very difficult decision. Um, 
I will cast my vote for Gary Nyhan. Um, I think between his length of experience and the town meeting um, experience he has and some of his budget experience that, um, that that's where I put my vote. But I really thank everybody else and would ask that you continue to be involved and run again and you know stay stay involved because uh, it's really good to have you. Mrs. Webb. Uh, thank you, Mr. Crusoe. Uh, so we, we do all have the resumes. We heard the candidates talk. It's an impressive package of resumes. And um, I feel at this point um, one of the, the best things that we need on the committee going forward is um, we're, we're all educators, so we, we've got that and the administrative background, some budget background, but really um, I'm going to cast my vote for Amy Kohler. She brings what we need. Thank you. Mr. Sexton. Yeah, again, I'd like to reiterate and thank all three candidates coming out tonight. Um, is really a difficult choice and uh, very qualified uh, candidates for this position. Um, at this time, I think because of um, an edge and experience on, on both sides of what I feel the school community is going to be dealing with, I'm going to cast my vote for Gary Nyan. Nyan, excuse me? Nyan. Nyan. Thank you. Mr. Robinson? I, I, you know, just to again reiterate what everyone said, any any one of the candidates could could fill this role, uh, and you know it takes a lot of courage to, to to come forward and put yourself out there and go through this process, and I thank you for that. Uh, I would uh, go with Gary Nyan. Thank you, Mr. Halsey. So I cast my vote for a secret ballot. <laughs> um, and I say that because, um, you know, I, I came into this meeting knowing two of the candidates very well. Amy, you made me feel like I know you very well, um, and, and I, I, I kind of can't thank all of you enough, and I, I do have to tell you that this is not an easy decision to make, um, but for many of the aforementioned reasons, um, I, I'm going to vote, cast my vote for Gary Nyan. Mr. Ensminger. Uh, again, my thanks to all who came out tonight. I, I think every candidate exhibited his or her own particular strength, and I was happy to see that. I think you were, you were all strong candidates. Uh, having to make a decision, uh, I am uh, going to go with Gary Nyan on the basis of his uh, many years of involvement with Reading. I put a lot of stock in being a 20-year town meeting member. I think that shows a, a very good balance and experience with the uh, the trade-offs that have to happen in a town government mm -hmm. official. Thank you. Mrs. Doxer. I second the idea of um, the closed voting. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I do so because <laughs> I'd like to vote for all of you. Um, but that would be cheating, and I can't, and it's open. So, um, Amy, I feel like through paper and through in person, it's been wonderful to get to know you, and I would love for you to come back in April um, and run, because I think you'd be an amazing addition to the committee. Um, the same, this is so, the, the same with Gary. I think that you have so much to add and I've listened to it and we've debated and I've learned something every time we've spoken. We often are from elliptical machines having our conversations and I think that um, you would be a powerful addition to the committee as well. I cast my vote for Rob um, and I believe that that's for the rounding off of the committee as well as for your strengths and your different experiences both on the board of Samantha's Harvest, your knowledge um, from all dimensions of special ed and um, coaching and athletics, and I, I think that's an important link to make along with the substance abuse. Um, and saying this, I realize that there's expertise on all sides with those, but I long-windedly yeah. cast my vote. <laughs> I gotcha. But that's gotcha nothing now. new. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Doxer. Uh, I'm next on the list. I cast my vote for Mr. Nine. Mrs. Borowski. Um, 
I'd like to thank all three candidates as well, and I look forward and hope I have the opportunity to work with each of you moving forward, but I will cast my vote for Mr. Nyan. Mr. Arena. Um, I have a little vignette to tell tonight's candidates. I had the ambition one day to run for town meeting, which is reasonably easy. And then I decided to amp it up a bit and try to become a member of the Finance Committee. <coughs> uh, I'm not uh, uh, new to matters of finance, and I was turned down. And I couldn't understand why. And part of it was just familiarity. And I vowed that evening that I wouldn't be turned down again. And I showed up at every financial meeting, every financial forum, every meeting that group, and I was in the front of that group. And so the next time that happened, I wasn't a candidate. I was the guy who'd spent the last year with that group deliberating and chatting, and they were kind enough to entertain my uh, occasional questions. Uh, and I'd urge you all to do the same. Obviously, two members tonight will uh, not get the outcome they desired, but uh, you have an opportunity to look to next April or the next, the next position here or even an exposition in town government, and nothing impresses the current board than a dedication to show up each and every meeting. It speaks volumes more than, even more uh, than you can say tonight, you can say over the course of the next six months or one year. Uh, I'll cast my vote for Gary Nyan as well. His length of experience, uh, his point in his career having now uh, completed his, his formal work experience and now looking back, um, it's gonna be a real asset for the town. Thank you very much. Um, I, I will echo everything that was said here this evening. Thank you very much. This was an extremely difficult decision to make. Uh, the tally has Mr. Nine at eight, Mr. Gibbs at two, and uh, Ms. Kay Kaler, excuse me, at one. So we do have- Eight, one, one. Eight, one, one, I have. Eight, one, one. Oh, yeah. Yes. His docs are voted for- Yeah, and in fact, Again, I screwed up on the English and I'll screw up on the math side as well. <laughs> so that's just a perfect night for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I failed that one too. So, uh, Mr. Nine, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you to the other candidates. Uh, that concludes the school committee's business and now we can get started with the financial forum. Can we Thank take you. a break? Adjourn. 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 Adj